Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, there is something that many of you will need to know. Many people consider the Bible to be a holy book, it to be a religious book. The Bible is neither a holy book or a religious book. King James decided to call it the Holy Bible. The word holy means clean. That's all the word holy means, people. It just means clean, without spot, without blemish. The Bible is a quote-unquote sacred book, but it is not a holy book. That's what men do. Men make things more than what it originally supposed to be. So, Congress in 19... Now, this is Congress. This is not me. In 1982, October 4th, 96.1211. This is a statute at large, ladies and gentlemen, not a public law. They refer to it as public law, but it's not a public law, a public ad law. It's not a public law, it's a statute at large. Need y'all to pay attention, because it's very important that you pay attention to this joint resolution of 1982. Yeah, they continue to practice, so, you know, people are going, HDR, no, this is SJ resolution. Okay? Senate joint resolution. SJ resolution, not HJ resolution. Okay, HJR, this is SJR, 165. But we don't care about the Senate's joint resolution. We care about the actual act of Congress. So let's prove that this is an act. Authorizing and requesting the president to proclaim 1983 as the year of the Bible. 1983, if you guys don't understand, for me, that's a very pivotal year because a lot of things happened with me in 1983. A lot of stuff. Father died. That's the year I decided I'm going to go ahead and search for myself for things, to find out things for myself. Wasn't going to take nobody's word for nothing. That was also the worst year of my life. Not because of my... It, my father dying was one thing, but that wasn't what made it the worst year of my life. That was the worst year of my life because I found out who my friends really were. That's when I was introduced to how ignorant people really are. That's the year I grew up. Whereas the Bible is the word of God, has made a unique contribution to the shaping of the United States as a distinctive and blessed nation of the and people. Okay, whereas deeply held religious convictions sprang in from the Holy Scriptures. See, the Bible's not a holy book. It's not, pay attention, a religious book. It's just that religions use it as the, they claim, the basis of their foundation. But whereas deeply held religious convictions springing from the Holy Scriptures led to the early settlement of our nation. Now, hold on, one, I got I to show y'all this because y'all not going to understand if I don't. Because y'all not going to get it. If I told y'all, y'all wouldn't believe it. But Congress just told y'all, wake up. You guys have heard of the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. If you haven't, well, let me give you an education as to why it's called what it's called. It's not going to be one of those conversations. I'm just going to correlate the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. New World, the New World being America, translation, Translation that isn't that junk that King James did of the holy, the clean scriptures, the pure scriptures, the unblemished scriptures. That's the name. It doesn't mean this new world order junk that everybody's trying to say that's what it means. It was called the new world before they even started talking about a new world 
order. They're calling it a new world order because this was called the new world when they settled this nation. But what you don't know is the reason why you hear Jehovah's Witnesses referring to the new world is because they were the ones who were amongst Columbus and his pilgrimage coming over here to this land. They were the ones being persecuted in Britain, England. They were the ones whose religious freedoms were being affected. But people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that this country was founded by individuals who are now calling themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh uh, non political. We don't vote, we don't get involved in all that junk. But let me prove it to you because Congress knows. Whereas deeply held religious convictions, you see, you weren't allowed to have religious convictions in England in the 1600s. The Catholic Church ruled the day, and the only way you could talk about the Bible or read the Bible was in church where they read in Latin. The people weren't allowed to have their own copies of the Bible. So what? King James had his own version of the Bible. The people weren't allowed to have their own copy of the Bible. Go ahead, go back and look at the history. If they wanted to get an understanding of the Bible, they had to go to the church, which was read in Latin, and the people didn't speak Latin. They didn't understand Latin, so they just sat there listening to Latin. And that's nothing wrong with Latin. Latin's a wonderful language. But the people didn't understand it. Okay, let's continue so you guys understand, because I just want you to know how this nation got started, because Congress is not unaware of it. The scriptures led to the early settlement of our nation, whereas the biblical teachings inspired the concept of civil government that are contained in our Declaration of Independence. See, it didn't say the Declaration of Independence, but it's, pay attention, it's the Declaration. But they knew what they were saying when they said of independence. See, if they had said the Declaration of Independence, they'd be talking about that fake document. And the Constitution of the United States. Now. Here you go. This is them explaining how this nation got started. And they called it the year of the Bible because that was the intent. They were supposed to be establishing the nation upon the Bible, not upon religion. It had nothing to do with religion. That's why the very first set of laws were the laws established in the colonies. And even though they were limited in their understanding and backwards in their understanding when it came to scriptural requirements, they did try. It was only after individuals got greedy and thought they could come over here and strip the land of its natural resources and start new businesses, that's when we got all of this rich people going ahead and taking over and taking over Congress. The same thing has continued to this day. But I definitely wanted to show this to you. Why did I want to show this to you? Because the only reason why I'm showing you this in the first place, this is the first time I've actually read this. I've never read it before. I've had it. People have shown it to me. People have talked about it. But now that I have a better understanding of why it was put together, that's the point right there. Why did they put this together? Why did they do 1983? Why was it the year of the Bible? They didn't have to do that. Because... There was a lot of problems in our society at that point. We had um, a religious group known as the Born Again Christians. You guys know the evangelicals. Well, they were becoming very popular at that time. And at that time, there was a lot of, what did they say? Enthusiasm for religious conviction. And some of them were quite aggressive in their expressing themselves not all of them some of them and so it was the nation was really more focused on the bible in 1983 than they ever was especially since the 60s remember the 50s and 60s they walked away from it the 70s most certainly but here it is the 80s and it was receiving a revival so to speak and so we have Congress even talking about it, even mentioning it in law. So 1983. If only you guys knew. That's why I said I had to find out for myself because everybody was talking about the Bible and I'd already know what the Bible said. I already know what the basic tenets of Scripture were. 
I had already known that too many people were out there talking about junk that is nowhere in the Bible. I knew that stuff. So I had to see if there was somebody else out there teaching what the Bible actually taught. I'm sorry. There were those who came distantly close, but still distant. Nobody was accurate. The one thing to this day that I've appreciated about Jehovah's Witnesses, and I'll tell it to you because all of you know it if you've ever spoke to one, they'll show you what they're talking about. Where do you think I get the, the habit of showing you what I'm talking about from? It's from them. Why? Because if you're going to say something, you need to be able to back it up. Most people can't back up what they are preaching, so to speak. Okay? I know Barry White telling people to practice what they preach. Okay? At least they back up what they talk about. They can show you one place to another, to another, to another. Go ahead. All the people who've had a consult with me, they know this. They will tell you, no, he doesn't have to go look at any books or anything. He just says it and he looks it right up and there it is. Because I only have two, two acts, ladies and gentlemen, scripture and law. Those are the only two acts I have. I don't have any other act. We're dealing with financial law, contractual law, any type of law. Hey, I'm your guy. You want to deal with, tri what is that, trivia, that junk? You got to go talk to somebody else because I don't care about that stuff. So I don't focus on it. My mind won't hold on to it. All right, let me show you something. And then we're going to leave y'all to y'all day because y'all need that. Here's our document. I got to come back to paragraph seven and eight because I'm amending the document as I told you guys. But what I've done right here is I want y'all to pay attention to this. I, I think you guys might appreciate this. So I'm going to let it talk and I'm not going to interrupt. Our client has asked us to implore on their behalf that you forgive them for the debt, that they are sorry and do repent, as they have forgiven your oversight as required in law. The requirement of forgiving debts, Matthew 6 12, dot and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. The law corresponding with this in the United States may be had at 12 U.S.C. 248 which reads, g, requiring writing off of doubtful or worthless assets of banks. To require the writing off of doubtful or worthless assets upon the books and balance sheets of Federal Reserve Banks. Reserve Bank means, the term member bank shall be held to mean any national bank, state bank, or bank or trust company, you have an account with one of the local Federal Reserve agents which is a member bank of the Federal Reserve which means that this provision is applicable to your institution as defined in statute. Through this act, the United States government has stated that it will forgive your indebtedness by giving you a dollar for dollar credit offset towards any tax liabilities you may have including net operating loss deductions. Whereas the Bible, the Word of God, has made a unique contribution in shaping the United States as a distinctive and blessed nation and people, whereas deeply held religious convictions springing from the Holy Scriptures led to the early settlement of our nation, whereas biblical teachings inspired concepts of civil government that are contained in our Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, whereas many of our great national leaders among them presidents. Washington, Jackson, Lincoln, and Wilson paid tribute to the surpassing influence of the Bible in our country's development, as in the words of President Jackson that the Bible is the rock on which our republic rests, whereas the history of our nation clearly illustrates the value of voluntarily applying the teachings of the scriptures in the lives of individuals, families, and societies, whereas this nation now faces great challenges that will test this nation as it has never been tested before, and whereas that renewing our knowledge of and faith in God through Holy Scripture can strengthen us as a nation and a people, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that the President is authorized and requested to designate 1983 as a National Year of the Bible in recognition of both the formative influence the Bible has been for our nation, and our national need to study and apply the teachings of the Holy Scriptures. So, let me just say this because I, I have to. I, like I said, I didn't read this. But Jehovah's Witnesses had a Bible that they used, they adopted. It wasn't theirs. They didn't write it. But everybody, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses wrote their own Bible. No, they adopted that Bible. As you see, it's written by the New World Translation Committee. But anyway, be that as it may, ladies and gentlemen, it's called the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, and a lot of people took exception to the fact that they called it the Holy Scriptures. But we have Congress referring to it as the Holy Scriptures. Now, Congress is nobody, but several times, right here, right here, they refer to it as the Holy Scriptures. 
they talk about religion. The Bible didn't create religion. Man created religion. Then they gave their religions a name, and ta-da, the nation of Israel, not the nation of Islam, the nation of Israel, not that junk over in the land of Israel right now, the nation of Israel, the original nation of Israel, the one called the Hebrews. Those, that nation of Israel, ladies and gentlemen, they weren't a religion. <laughs> they were a nation. Pay attention. They were not a religion. They were a nation. And they distinguished themselves by having fringes on their garments to distinguish them from other nations so that they would not be considered as being part of other nations. They were a nation, not a religion. Did they practice religion? No, they practiced what was called the law. Like in the United States, you'll have sheriffs saying, I'm the law around here. Well, the Israelites, the nation of Israel, practice the law. What was the law? Well, it was called the Mosaic Law Covenant, an agreement. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in America, there is a covenant, a law covenant known as the Constitution. I just did a video showing everybody how the Constitution is not part of the law. Well, that law covenant is for government officials. Pay attention. That's not for you. But once you understand that, then you understand how you should be operating. You don't have to allow somebody to force you into a contract. Oh, I'm sorry, I did say three times. There's the other one right there. Whew. At least three times it says Holy Scriptures, Holy Scriptures, Holy Scriptures, Holy Scriptures. And then it says Scriptures here. So they understand what they are. And you look at the word Scripture, you'll see why it's called Scripture. The Bible, the word Bible just means many books. So Bible is a good term, but Bible is not, it's not the term. Bible means many books. That doesn't describe that book. But to call it Holy Scriptures gives it the appropriate term for the book. All right, not going to keep you guys. Just wanted to explain this. We're utilizing that, and the reason why we're utilizing that is because the law requires forgiveness. If you don't believe me, go ahead, take the time, and read. 12 U.S.C. 248, then go look at the statute at large and see how it requires forgiveness. Pay attention. Requiring writing off of debt requires it, making it mandatory. Banks and other financial institutions. How do we know other financial institutions? Because we're going to hover on this link right here. Get my mouse to show up on the screen. See that link right here? Control. And we're going to wait for it to open up so that we can see what Reserve Bank actually says. And while that's opening up, you're going to notice it's going to take us to the same definition that's at the beginning of the Federal Reserve Act, the act that specifically says that National Bank and, well, let's, let's do that. Give me a second to pause, y'all. There we go. I was about to, man, whew, I was about to do that. National Bank and National Banking Association, as used in this chapter, meaning the whole Federal Reserve Act, shall be held to be synonymous, interchangeable, meaning the same thing. National Bank and National Banking Association is the same thing. They're the same word, just one says association. When you understand what a national bank is, it's only association. Hold on. The term membered bank. Now, hold on. Membered bank is important. Pay attention. The term membered bank shall be held to mean any national bank, any state bank, any bank, any bank, any bank, any trust company, which has become a member of one of the Federal Reserve Banks. Well, how do you become a member of one of the Federal Reserve Banks? Do you not open up an account with that reserve bank? Does that not make you a member of that reserve bank? Imagine that. It tells you right there who has become a member of the Federal Reserve Bank. So they just told you that we just made you a member. Welcome to our bank. Pay attention. Don't they give you member services? Okay, so all banks, including you, when you have an account with one of the local Federal Reserve agents who's a member bank of the Federal Reserve, even if it's a credit union, so glad we got that out. Hold on one second. It applies to you. Okay? 
to require the writing off of doubtful or worthless debts or assets upon the books and balance sheets of the Federal Reserve Bank. Reserve Bank means the term membered bank shall be held to mean any, any, any. You have an account with one of the local Federal Reserve agents, which is a membered bank of the Federal Reserve, which means that this provision is applicable to your institution as defined in statute. You don't need to worry about whether or not they understand what you just said. What you need to understand is that the courts understand what you just said. That's what we're doing here. We're preparing for court. So why are y'all worried about all that other stuff? You just have to have the understanding. Because when you explain this to the court using the statute and using the terminology of the statute, the interpretation of the statute, what can they say about the statute other than, uh, we got to switch the subject. We can't let you bring that up in this courtroom because that's too devastating for us. We can't handle that type of devastation. We apologize, but you're going to have to just go on and sit out in the hall while we're trying to figure out how to handle you. Because that's what you're going to run into. So the law already has a mechanism whereby your debts are forgiven. Why? Because this law requires them to file a 1099-C. Ladies and gentlemen, they are required to file a 1099-C. I got to add that information in a moment. That's the forgiveness of debt. That's the cancellation of debt. They receive a benefit as a result of that. So enough of these games. I'm tired of y'all playing games with these fools because y'all making it worse for the rest of y'all. So stop playing games with these ignorant people. You follow me? I do hope you understand that I really do believe that there will be a change in the whole debt collection process as a result of this letter. Because guess what? Any of you, Oh, we're giving this to all of you. You guys can take it, mix it up, change it, add in all of your junk. I'm not going to care. Because it has the interrogatories, is a notice of pending suit, is a challenge to the debt, and it contains a discovery request, four items in one, and it's only 10 pages in length. It's going to be probably almost 11 pages because I'm going to be adding some other information to solidify some points. But either way, it's y'all's. Everybody gets to use it, our clients and everybody else. This is donated by the Eon Foundation. Okay? Eon Foundation is the one donating this. And I, because it's my right of election, decided to give it to all of you. So y'all just going to have to wait. Okay? Just going to have to wait. When I put it up, I will show you guys everything, including this statement in the Truth and Lending Act. Okay, this statement in the Truth and Lending Act, wait till y'all read these two sections. Go ahead, take a look at it. It'll tell you exactly what it is. All right, thank you all for taking the time. Gotta go.